Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Um, today I wanted to do a video on blood pressure and in particular I wanted to do this video on those people who have been diagnosed as having high blood pressure but who can't seem to tolerate blood pressure medication. So um, every time they're given a blood pressure tablet uh, they get horrible side effects, they can't take the blood pressure tablet, they feel awful, then they go back and the GP gives them another blood pressure tablet and that doesn't work, that causes side effects and uh, soon um, every single tablet that they're given they develop side effects to so they can't take any tablets their blood pressure continues to remain up and this causes them a great deal of anxiety because they think oh my god what's going to happen to me my blood pressure is so high and I can't seem to take any tablets and it's horrible for these people because uh, they feel so incredibly anxious so I thought I would do a video on what to do if you have high blood pressure or if you've been told you have high blood pressure but can't seem to tolerate any tablets all right so i hope that you find this useful the first thing to say is that up to 10 percent of patients who have high blood pressure are unable to tolerate medications for blood pressure uh, so you're not alone all right the second thing to say is that when i say 10 percent i mean that these 10 percent can't tolerate up to five or seven different blood pressure tablets so these are people who are intolerant to multiple agents um, so if you are one of those people what do you do well we know a couple of interesting facts about these patients patients who don't tolerate multiple medications for blood pressure one they have a higher prevalence, a fourfold higher prevalence of anxiety. So they have an anxiety disorder, for, you know, a lot of such patients. And the second thing it's worth knowing about is that they have a fourfold increase in um, gastroesophageal reflux. And this is relevant because maybe some of these tablets that they're taking by mouth, uh, because they have uh, reflux, etc., that can precipitate the reflux. And that may be one of the reasons why people don't tolerate some of those medications. So they have a higher prevalence of anxiety. They have a higher prevalence of reflux. So if you're someone who's not able to tolerate those medications, it may be worth asking yourself that. Do I suffer from anxiety uh, and do I have reflux? Uh, the second thing to then say is that, of course, then if you do suffer from anxiety and you are not tolerating the medications, then, of course, your anxiety will get much worse because you're worried about your blood pressure. Remember, the, um, the blood pressure in the short term is rarely ever dangerous unless it's very, very high. Uh, the main really the main benefit of lowering the blood pressure is in the long term. All right. So just because you can't tolerate any medications at the moment, please don't panic. You know, uh, there are ways of getting around it, and this is what I'm going to discuss. Now, uh, the first thing I would always recommend is if you have high blood pressure or if you've had high blood pressure, that you have a 24-hour blood pressure monitor because the blood pressure will fluctuate, all right? Uh, so if you take it in the morning, you have higher stress hormones, the blood pressure will be higher. If you've done it because you've been stressed at work, the blood pressure will be higher. If you're feeling anxious about your blood pressure being taken, then that will also make your blood pressure higher. So you cannot rely on isolated values. You have to get a 24-hour average. And therefore, it's always a good idea where possible to get a 24-hour average. And rarely will you find that on a 24-hour average, will the blood pressure be as high as you think it to be. Isolated values are always much higher. So when you do a 24 hour average, it's generally lower than what you think. Okay, It may not be normal. It may not be what is considered normal, but it may probably not be as high. And that's important because it'll calm your anxiety down that your blood pressure is really not that high. Um, the second thing I would say is it's always a good idea to see if there's anything in your lifestyle which can make your blood pressure come down naturally. So, for example, if you are stressed, doing mindfulness, etc., will help your blood pressure come down. If you carry extra weight, then exercising will bring your blood pressure down. If you don't sleep or if you have sleep apnea, then that can also um, affect blood pressure. And if you treat that, the blood pressure can come down. So those are just kind of things that um, you should do anyway, because they're natural ways by which the blood pressure can come down. Then I think it's worth saying, well, if you do get reflux, it's worth treating the reflux. OK, so treating it by, you know, going and getting seen and getting that treated is a good idea because it may allow you to tolerate your medications better. 
Let's say you do all that and you still can't tolerate the medications. Here are a few tips that may allow you to tolerate medications a bit better. Uh, and most of these tips are from a paper that was published in the um, Journal of Clinical Hypertension. Uh, this was published in August 2015. And the lead author is a guy called Sotiris Antonio. I'm going to put the link at the bottom of the video and I'll put it on my Facebook page. But basically what these guys did is they looked to see if there were any strategies that could be used to bring down blood pressure in patients who are intolerant of lots of medications. What they say is that the first thing is that most of the intolerance, most of the side effects seem to be a dose dependent side effect, i.e. the higher the dose, the more likelihood of getting um, side effects. So what they say is that actually, if we used very, very small doses, but instead of using small doses of one agent, if we used a mixture of small doses of two or three agents, that is going to be far more effective at bringing your blood pressure down than a very high dose of only one agent, because um, you're more likely to get side effects with a high dose of one agent than you are with low doses of multiple agents. So going down to very low doses, but having a combination of different blood pressure tablets may work for you. The second thing then to say is that it is also known that some people are actually allergic to the capsule you know, in which the medication is put. So if you take liquid form, and many of the blood pressure medications can be taken as a liquid, some people seem to tolerate that a lot better. So just taking it in a liquid form may work. The third thing they suggest is even if you can't tolerate it orally, sometimes you can get these patches for blood pressure lowering patches and various medications can be um, delivered transdermally, but transdermally by wearing a patch. And that may allow some people to tolerate blood pressure lowering medications a lot better. Uh, so that's another option. Um, then uh, it is also worth knowing that actually, you know, there are other options available. If, if, if none of these things work, uh, then there is something called renal denervation where you can actually use a catheter to um, uh, affect the uh, nerves around the kidneys and that can bring the blood pressure down. Uh, that's a very specialized thing, and you probably want to go and see an expert who in um, resistant hypertension to see whether you would be suitable for it. It was very much in favor uh, three or four years ago, and then a study came out which didn't show as much of a uh, benefit from it, and therefore it then sort of um, went out of favor. But there are some centers which are still doing this, and that would be another option. So um, I hope these are tips that may be useful. I certainly don't think you need to be excessively worried about your blood pressure. There are ways to bring the blood pressure down. Uh, most of all, it's really important to minimize your anxiety about the blood pressure and try and lead a healthy lifestyle. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the, the taking small doses of lots of tablets is better. Uh, taking it in liquid form and finding out if you can get the medications in liquid form may be better. Treating your reflux may be a good thing. Uh, and transdermal patches for blood pressure may be good. And if that doesn't work, then you could always consider this thing called renal denervation. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the love you give me. I'm very appreciative. Um, the seminar that we did in York was a big success on the 28th of April. Uh, we plan to do another one on the 8th of September. So if you're interested, please get in touch uh, uh, via my Facebook page, which is York Cardiology One. We are hosting a seminar in New York from the 4th and the 5th of August. And if you happen to be there, then I would love to see you. You can access this on www.healthyheartweekend.com. Thank you so much. Um, and um, all the best. Thank you. Bye.